trust me. There is no communication for my message, my message after message Sunday after Sunday. But I can see all the readings are all connected. The songs are all connected. It bless my heart because God is working and moving to our needs. This afternoon, I want you to see a wonderful message, which is, you can see, there's a negative, there's a positive, and I entitled the message this afternoon, as I try to visualize, as I try to organize my thought in conjunction to the reading of the scripture in a few moments, I entitled this, Facing the, the Ongoing Hardship with Overwhelming Victory. Facing the ongoing hardship with overwhelming victory. So I'm reading to you in the book of Romans 8, 18, all the way to verse 25. Now I consider that our present sufferings are not worthy comparing with the glory that will be revealed to us or in us. For the creation waits an eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, the creation of God. We are talking about the planet Earth, the starry heavens, everything. The creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice. You can see that, not its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope. That the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. So the whole creation, the animal kingdom, the, the abyss kingdom, the birds, and the, the plants kingdom, even the starry heavens, they're also suffering pain because of what happened in the first sin that committed by our first parent. And then not only so, but we ourselves, believers, Christians, not exempted, who have the first fruit of the Spirit, in the capital S, with the Holy Spirit inside of us, look at the word, grow inwardly, as we wait, which is future, the event is in the future, but there's hope, eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies, the body that is vulnerable and no exception to suffer the pain and the agony, frustrations and emotion, mental, our bodies one day, for in this hope, we were saved. But hope that is in is not hope at all, but hopes for what they already have. But if we hope for what we do, not yet have, we wait for it patiently. So bear with me in this wonderful message of Paul. So powerful, and every Sunday we are enjoying the exposition of the Word of God. So I'll open it with my Bible also, and thank, thank you, Nathan, for that. Now last Sunday, as you remember, we covered three important, wonderful words, and then the assurance in our lives as a family, because of the relationship we have with our Creator and the Savior, Jesus Christ. I should recall on Sunday, we talk about first is the word adoption. We were not children of God, but we were adopted. So believers became a sons of God when we accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We detached from our, you know, beginning of where we came from, sin of Adam, and now we become children of God by adoption. We're completely now enjoying all the benefits and all the privileges as sons of God. Now on a Sunday we talk also about we are children of God. The Holy Spirit testify with our human spirit that we are the children of God. There is the down payment, the initial down payment, which is the third person of the Trinity that you and I are having today, witnessing, testifying that we are all children of God. And number three, as you recall, we covered also that only we are children of God or sons of God, we are heirs of God, which means we are fellow heirs of Jesus Christ or as children of God. 
So we are heirs of Jesus Christ. Now these three powerful messages of God in his dealing with his subjects are more than enough to take and fully grasp. It is overwhelming. Now the question in conjunction with what we have just heard and read this afternoon, the question will always arise in your mind, in the minds of the general population, in the whole wide world, is the question, even question for the believers today, and you heard many believers that will ask the same question, why there is evil in the suffering in the world? Why there is evil in suffering in the world? Escalating, so much suffering. You, can, you cannot number left and right in the whole wide world. And the second question is, if God is all-powerful, and if God is all-loving, then why does He permit evil and suffering in the world? Why? He is love and is powerful. Why did He allow these things to go on? Right? Like a waves of an ocean. And those are good questions, and it needs to be answered from the Word of God. So in a few moments, we're going to go deeper in the realm of human afflictions and sufferings which the Christian believers are not exempted. But the end result is incomprehensible, glorious celebration that the eyes never seen nor ears have heard the wonderful plan that God has stored for those who love Him. Now suffering is the result of human sin. The world is not the way that God created it. And because of that, all are vulnerable to the effects of sin in the world. Now, some question, because of the sin, why does one person suffer and another does not? Why is it there's some kind of a terrible kind of thunderstorm that devastated the mid middle uh, the mid Midwest of America, or the tsunami in in Japan, while other parts of the world are not? Why do catast uh, catastrophes happen to some and not to others? Now it is because of sin that is in the world, but the be a time in a day when the Lord will return and cleanse this world of sin in all the suffering. Now here are some of the pointers before we go to the ongoing hardship but overwhelming victory. Some of the pointers for us to, to know why hardship and sufferings are in the world in it is happening before the very eyes of God. And then he could see that, but there's no action to overrule the malignant effect of sin and then the destruction corresponding to that kind of sin. Now we have a few scriptures this afternoon that will enlighten us, but I do not assume that I know all the answers. I'll give some of these answers to you and to the things that are not revealed, sacred things belongs unto God. Number one is in the book of Isaiah 55, beginning from verse 8 to verse 9. So if you want to take note of that, just go ahead. Now the Bible says, God's ways are above our ways. For my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. For the believer, for all of us today, our part is just to live by faith, not to question. Yes, it's normal to question God. Why are these things happening? And why are these things not happening to some? Now the Bible is very, very clear. My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. In the admonition of Paul to the New Testament, and then that was taken from the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 4, the Bible says believer's part is to live by faith and not by sight in the book of 1 Corinthians. The just shall live by faith. 
Another reason why these things are happening is this. There is what we call the willful, deliberate, habitual disobedience of man to the revealed will of God, which is the Bible. Men continue to live habitually, deliberately, in, uh, to sin. And what happened because of that, they have created a harmful stigma like an incurable diseases that is communicated to the whole one world today. It's like an epidemic. Now when man revealed against God, he set in motion an entire series of events and changed the very nature of man, even the creation of God. As we have just read a few moments ago. Both of these men in your gender, men and women, in the creation that you could see today with our naked eyes, were both affected because of sin. Creation was no longer a paradise, but in the book of Genesis 3, 17 to 18, and book of Romans 8, 22, the ones created order that was perfect from the very beginning was no longer a place to enjoy wonderful relationship with God in a wonderful creation of the animal kingdom. It was no longer a paradise, but bore thorns and thistles, according to the word of God, because of sin. And another thing, because now when men fell, people became sinful. There is what they call a chain reaction, a corresponding effect. Now people became sinful. I want you to observe, and every time I turn on the television in the night time, because I love news and I love some sports, just in between. When I watch TV, it's about 5, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then I turn it off. Many, many times in the evening, when I turn on the television, what I could say in movies today are more on murders, more on killing. Just watch that, make note of that as you watch the TV. More on murders. It seems that murders is being elevated so high, so much. And more, and then not only murders, more on sexual messages, and many times anti God messages in the movies, and then the morality, which is very important to us is being replaced with immorality like the homosexuals and making the name of God mention the name of Jesus in vain so often in the television movies today. So we can see people became sinful. They were haters of God. Romans 5.12 and Ephesians 2.3. So you can see man became sinful. So this, that is an enigma, the corresponding effect. It, that's why in the last days, there is an increase of evil in the last days, uncontrollable. Now, another thing that you can say is God did not overrule the free will of men. God gave us the, the choice what to follow, good or evil, the pre-choice. Now, in our time, just put it in Quaker Seal, some say in Quaker Seal, maybe some, one in uh, Glenwood. Try to make a survey of the people in your neighborhood. Okay, just imagine. And then, one by one, house to house, you knock on the door and say, I want you to know, persuade them that God is the answer to the dilemma of the world. Jesus is the answer. And the only way to see a wonderful com community is to come back to God. Now the question is, just you, as you imagine, how many do you think out of 1,000 homes will say yes to it? This is just a test. Now free will is given, but men choose darkness from the Word of God rather than light because their deeds are evil. You're lucky if there is one that would believe, yes, I think, I think Jesus is the answer. 
So light comes into darkness, and darkness does not comprehend it, and doesn't absorb the light because they are living in darkness. Another reason is there's a time when Paul was in, in Athens, and he saw to the, to the uh, stage of the unknown God, and he preached the wonderful message in the book of Acts chapter 17. I want you to hear another reason. There's a time in the economy or the plan of God that He will send judgment to all. Quote, Acts 17.31 Because He has appointed a day on which He will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom He has ordained. In other words, the time is set aside for the punishment and then a time is set aside for making the world a better place to live is in the hands of God and in the decision of the Almighty God, our Creator. And it will surely come without delay one day. You know what? There are paradox in life that I would like to open to you, and these are all from the scripture. The paradox in life. Paradoxes, there because there are, I'm giving you about six of them. Now, by the way, a paradox is a statement a sentence or a proposition that it seems self-contradictory or absurd and yet expressing truth. Number one, to live, we must die, or to live, we must lose it. Matthew 10, 39, Luke 17, 33. The Bible says, he who finds life will lose it. And who who loses his life for my sake will find it. Another one is, to get, we must give. Proverbs 11, 23, all the way to, uh, to 25. The generous will be made rich, or they will prosper. In who he waters, the one who waters will be watered himself. So we can see the, the wonderful effect, or the blessings. To reign, we must serve. Look, 12, 20, 42 to 44, and then 43. It says, blessed is that servant, Home is master will find so doing when he comes. He is so blessed. He will be happy when the servant who appointed him to do something, when they come back, he was doing the thing he commanded him to do. Now in verse 42 of the same book of Luke, I want you to see the result. The master will make him ruler over his household to give them their portion of food in due season. And that is the reign we must serve. Now, another thing we can say, the paradox in this life, you know, in our life as believers, to be exalted, to be promoted, to be well known, we must be humble. Matthew 18, 4, and then Matthew 23, 12. The Bible says, therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And then number five, the first must be the last. Book of Mark 9.35 and Matthew 20.26 If anyone desires to be first, he shall be last of all in a servant of all. There's a song, if you want to be great, you must be the servant of all. You can see. And then lastly, in the book that we're studying, in Romans 8.17, and we jump to 8.18 8, this afternoon, to reign with God in the coming kingdom, take note and listen, to reign with God, in the coming kingdom, we suffer with Him. We suffer with Him. Join heirs with Christ, if so, be that way we may suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified, we may also glorify together. Now, so we'll just go ahead this afternoon into the main body of this wonderful exposition of the book of Romans chapter 8. Now the Bible says, for I recall, let's go back to that. Thank you. 18, please. I consider that our present sufferings, present, it is not yesterday, it was not 20 years ago, now, I consider, Paul is talking, that our present sufferings are not worth. Look at the comparison, comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. In the King James Version, 
For I reckon that the suffering of this present time, sufferings, are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Number one, the overwhelming blessings from God that He promised in the preceding study that we had two Sundays ago, I want you to know and to hear entails following the leader. The overwhelming blessings and grace and wonderful promises of God entails we must follow the leader. Now suffering is not foreign to all those who are called disciples of Christ. It is not foreign. There is a wrong notion and there is misconceptions in our day and age today. In the Christian culture, especially of the teaching with due respect, emphasizing so much on grace. And I want you to know I love grace. But emphasizing so much on grace, but justice of God regarding judgment is put aside. Favor, blessing, and, and prosperity in every area of, of life are highlighted, but preaching against sin and the suffering of the saints for Christ on the other side of the pendulum are ignored and never, or in some cases, rarely mentioned. We need to have a balance of theology in our present time. Now in verse 17, as we can see in last, uh, last uh, Sunday, if our children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with Him, look at this, if indeed we suffer with Him, many times the word suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified together. Now you will see clearly, and you'll notice that our life in Christ guarantee glory. Thank God for that. It is glorious to be in Christ. Yes, and I thank God for it. The word glory is, is a huge word. If I will try to put it in our earthly mentality or kind of interpretation, it is higher than the Mount Everest in Mount Everest to have the promise of God in our position is stand at the present moment. Glorious because we're in Christ. But I want you to hear and to listen. But the scripture indicates that God leads his children through suffering before the wonderful destiny is attained or reached. That's why you can see ongoing suffering, overwhelming victory. We cannot, I cannot bypass the truth in Christian journey of life. Remember that the world we have today in Australia is not our home. Our citizenship here in Australia is for just a season. In our lifestyle, as we apply the Word of God to our lives, we are being programmed and we are being transformed to the life that Jesus exemplified, to a life that Jesus modeled for us to follow. There's a clear distinctive, take note of this, a clear distinctive of the followers of Jesus Christ, not only to enjoy, which we thank God, the benefits and all the blessing of Christian experience. But also, this is the distinction to prepare. Blessings are on the right side, but on the other side, but to 